and welcome to day three of the life of my documentary. And I don't know why I always end up doing these at dinner time, but it definitely does crazy things to my hair. But anyway, day three, I woke up this morning to a message on my phone that someone had randomly donated money to this documentary film project. That's right. Sent me money. They said, I love the fact that you're doing a film here. I want to support you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So we're gonna get to look into some equipment. I've been searching cameras, like what's a good documentary camera? I think I am going to get a documentary camera and a three-point lighting system. I have been searching around on Amazon and you can actually get a good Canon Vixia camera with a built-in microphone that's an omnidirectional microphone that you can use for like both of them together is like $400. Anyway, it's a lot less than I thought it would be. And I've created lists on Amazon of film equipment that I think would work for this. And I'm going to send that out on this week's resources list. So if you want to see that, um, join the email list at castycash.com slash doc diary. You can either spell that out or check below the video. I'll always put the link there if you want to follow along. But those are the ones that I've looked up that I think are neat. Um, and they will be there for you to see if you'd like to use some of them. But one of the things that I'm realizing is I've got this microphone right here. And I don't actually know where it is in my office to show you right at the moment. Okay, yeah, I know I have it somewhere, but um, obviously not where I can put my hands on it really quickly. But I have basically, it's a YouTuber light that I bought on Amazon. It's one of those circle lights, you know, that you can clip to your computer and it shines right at your face and gives you much better lighting than what I have going on right here. Yeah, so I've got that. I have a small Canon camera. I have the camera on my iPhone and I'm commandeering my husband's iPhone and I have an iPad. So ultimately I could shoot one interview and set up probably five camera angles on it. It's insane. So we could definitely get some of that going. I did pick a topic. We are going to do fencing masters in Renaissance England. And we're doing that because I have the most connections with people who study this area of Shakespeare's history. So I feel like I can do that. I have more options right now for that topic in terms of people I could reach out to that'd be interested in doing an interview. Fun things, Jason Brubaker sent out an email. He's with Filmmaker Stuff. That's another resource and link I'll send out in this week's email um, for those of you following along on the documentary. And he said that there are people who film documentaries and you can actually do the talking head video like what I'm doing now, except you record it over Zoom. And so you can do basically the same setup I do for my podcast, only we would film it. So it would be the same thing as a podcast interview, but I would be talking to the person over um, over Zoom and use the, the camera that way. Now, obviously that requires a little bit more coordination because you're not physically there on the other side of the camera. So you kind of have to talk your guest through what you need from them in terms of their background and that they have to look nice. And so it's a little bit more effort on your guest's part, but then they get to be featured in a documentary for going to that little bit of extra effort for the interview. So it kind of would work out, I think. Um, but Here's what I did in the middle of the night. See my, my notes? This is the kind of notes that you make when you make up in, wake up in the middle of the night going, I've got to write this idea down right now. But here's what I have. For a documentary, most of them are about 50 minutes to an hour long. And so I thought, well, that's four 15-minute increments. Podcast interviews are normally between 20 and 30 minutes. So the way I figure is I've divided this up into four 15-minute increments. We've got... What kind of weapons were on stage? Where did they get them? And looking into things like Philip Henslow's diary and other sources that talk about what the props were on stage. That'll be one section. And then we'll move into what were the reputation of the weapons. And then the third 15 minutes will be introducing the Italian fencing masters that were present and practicing when William Shakespeare was doing theater. And then the last part of the documentary will be looking at how we apply this history to staging Shakespeare's plays today. And we'll talk with some experts that are doing that and want to bring history onto the stage and how do they do that and where do they get their information. And 
does it matter to the production overall whether William Shakespeare's history is portrayed accurately? Does that, does that come into play? And so we'll talk to people that do this and find out. And that'll be sort of the story that we tell is what was it in Shakespeare's life and how are we bringing that history into the present day? And then the exploration of swords and the pen and we'll play on some kind of pen being mightier than the sword, obviously. We can't leave that out. So those are the four pieces I broke my documentary down into. I have made a list of guests that I think would be good. I'm being a little bit reserved about telling you that because, well, obviously I want you to watch the film. So I don't, and those people haven't agreed to be in the documentary, um, but I have made a list. And once I get the, the questions firmed up, a little more this week into next week, then once I know what I'm going to ask them and what I'm going to need from them, then I'm going to start pitching the people I would like to have on. I do know several people personally that I could ask to do this with me. So uh, yeah, once I feel like I can approach them professionally with a firm idea of what I'm going to, what the ask is, you know, what are my questions? How long is it going to last? what will I need you to do? As long as I can answer those questions, then I would feel comfortable sending a pitch email and saying, hey, I'm putting a documentary together. Would you like to be a part of it? And I feel like that's basically the same pitch as what I would do for a podcast. It's just, I'm going to film it this time. Uh, some guests will be okay with that. I feel like some of the people on my list are going to say, yeah, sure. I'd be glad to do that. Others of them are going to say no, either because they don't want to or because their organization has some um, legal hurdles with that and everything which by the way, waivers is something I need to look into. I do use a waiver for my podcast um, and I assume some variation of that is what I'm gonna need to use for the film. Um, I've got to check into some, what are the legal stuff? So next, moving into the weekend, into next week, we are gonna finish outlining the questions. We're going to figure out what kind of equipment we can get. Yay! And then, um, and I actually don't think I might need a camera if I'm gonna do it over Zoom anyway. Um, I do have access to a standard Canon camera that has uh, films in HD and anyway, it's a high 4K, all, uh, it has all the appropriate letters attached to it in terms of shooting good film. So we could use, we could use that and not have to spend any money, um, just borrow the camera. I also know how to rig up a, a good three point lighting system without actual lighting equipment. You can use lights from Home Depot, their construction lights, and then you just put parchment paper over the front. I've done this for a film shoot before. The trick to that is you have to time it because the parchment paper will catch on fire. So for us, we would put it in front to be the filter on the light and we would have to set a timer for 30 minutes and it would beep and you'd have to take a 15 minute break to keep the parchment paper from um, catching on fire and we would just film the shoot in pieces like this film for 30 minutes take a break film for 30 minutes take a break and then just put the movie together that way I have done that so we can we can do that the backup plan is I still have the stands for that it was just made out of wood attached to PVC pipe and then at the top you just use a big clamp to hold the light up at the top of the stand so if the lighting doesn't pan out we have a plan. We have existing lights we can use that don't cost anything. We have a camera we can use that doesn't cost anything. We won't be looking particularly fancy, but we will get the footage. Brr. So yeah, that's day three from the Cassidy Cash Film Studios. Thanks for being here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>